The Work and Pensions Minister Penny Mordaunt has been appointed as the new International Development Secretary. She's replaced Priti Patel, who resigned last night because of her unauthorised contacts with Israeli politicians. Like Ms Patel, Penny Mordaunt supported the Leave campaign in the EU referendum. Our political correspondent Leila Nathu reports now from Westminster. Another day, another new face in government. Penny Mordaunt propelled into the job of International Development Secretary after Preeti Patel's fall from grace. A Leave supporter like her predecessor with ministerial experience, Penny Mordaunt's appointment retains the delicate balance in Theresa May's cabinet. This clean-up forced on the Prime Minister after a chaotic week with two senior ministers forced to resign within days. Now there's pressure on Theresa May to get her government back on track. Morning, Mr. Uh, Davis. How that. damaging is all this for the government? As the rest of her cabinet, like the Brexit secretary, and fresh faces like the new chief whip try to get on with their jobs. In the end, Preeti Patel had to go, out after admitting she'd failed to tell the Prime Minister about all her secret meetings with Israeli politicians. In her resignation letter, the now former International Development Secretary said, my actions fell below the standards of transparency and openness that I have promoted and advocated. I offer a fulsome apology to you and the government. Theresa May told Ms Patel, when we met on Monday, I was glad to accept your apology. But now that further details have come to light, it's right that you have decided to resign. The Cabinet had been carefully composed of Brexiteers and Remainers, men and women. This morning there was sympathy from some for the former Secretary of State, but the focus now is on whether her replacement can bring stability back to Theresa May's top team. Leila Nathu, BBC News, Westminster. Well, let's talk through all this with our Chief Political Correspondent, Vicky Young, who's in Downing Street. It's been quite an hour, but pretty much as, as predicted. Yeah, we felt like we were waiting uh, quite some time for confirmation of what everyone suspected, which was Penny Morden getting uh, that promotion, her first job in Cabinet. Uh, a woman who's been an MP since 2010. She's had a couple of jobs at Minister of State level. She was the first woman to be the Armed Forces Minister um, some time ago, and then she's moving now from the Department of Work and Pensions. But I think, crucially, uh, for where we are now at the moment, where the Conservative Party is, uh, it keeps the balance when it comes to Brexit in the Cabinet because she, like Priti Patel, supported uh, the Leave campaign. It keeps the gender balance as well, which Theresa May uh, is, has always uh, been concerned about. Uh, and then, actually, the promotions uh, behind that. Sarah Newton, the MP for Truro, is uh, moving uh, across to the Department of Work and Pensions from the Home Office, and she is replaced by Victoria Atkins, and that is significant because she is the first of the 2015 intake uh, to make it onto the first rung of the ministerial ladder. So the idea that maybe that some people were uh, throwing around at one point that this could be a moment for a big widespread reshuffle bringing in some new faces, that hasn't happened uh, but just a little nod towards that really with the appointment there of Victoria Atkins but I'm sure Theresa May uh, will be keen to move on um, to uh, get over this very, very difficult week where uh, not only has she lost two members of her cabinet, she has others who are under investigation uh, and she can't be sure, of course, how all this uh, will end. So I think the idea of a wider reshuffle right now uh, wasn't really on the cards. Penny Mordaunt, uh, a naval reservist, and of course Theresa May is going to be hoping that this appointment helps just steady this ship. Yeah, that's right. And I think Penny Mordaunt last week when uh, Sir Michael Fallon left the defence job, there were people who were speculating whether she might actually uh, get that. She uh, herself is uh, named after uh, a Navy uh, frigate, Penelope. Uh, she represents Portsmouth uh, North uh, and she has long been associated. She's a Royal Navy reservist, so she's long been associated with the armed forces. But she also has got experience uh, working for uh, an aid agency. So, you know, she will be able to move into that job. She's had enough experience around Whitehall and in government, I think, uh, to be able to make that move. And I'm sure Theresa May will be hoping that uh, she gets on with that uh, pretty rapidly so they can turn to some of the other things that they have to, to look at, which, of course, is those Brexit negotiations. And don't forget, in two weeks' time, a budget, a budget in which many people, particularly Tory MPs, are looking to, to try and get the government uh, onto the front foot after a pretty torrid time. Well, of course, uh, she, Penny Mordaunt, in charge of effectively of a £13 billion foreign aid budget. It's a big brief. 
Yeah, it is. Now, of course, within law, it is written in that 0.7% of uh, GDP, that's the output of the country, uh, goes on overseas aid. Now, that is uh, still controversial in some quarters. Some feel uh, that it shouldn't be written into law, that it should be done on the basis of need, uh, not on that kind of figure. Uh, that is not something that uh, Theresa May looks like she's going to budge from. What Priti Patel was doing in the job uh, was looking at the efficiency of how that money is spent, where it is going, is it going to the right places, uh, is it being used for the right reasons? Uh, I'm sure that that will continue uh, under Penny Morden. She has just gone over to uh, her department to uh, start with that job uh, straight away. Vicky, thank you very much. Vicky Young there in Downing Street.